Previously, we have studied about one of our machine element in uh, components designs, which is spur gears. Uh, in this lesson, we will learn another machine element in component design, which is bearings. So, bearing will be in chapter 14 in your juvenile textbook. As you can see in this uh, image, this is bearings. So bearing is a machine element where it is mounted on a shaft uh, to reduce friction and stress. Bearing is a standard component, so this this means that we we do not design bearing but we select bearing. So how do we select bearings in our design problem? Okay, in order to select bearing, so basically we need to follow their procedures. So this topic is about how to use their procedure, engineering procedure to select uh, bearings. Mainly there are mainly there there are two types of bearings, uh, which ball bearings and roller bearings. This image is a nomenclature of a ball bearing. As you can see in this image, roughly what I could say is that we have outer ring, we have inner ring and the ball bearing itself as you can see the inner diameter of the inner ring is the ball where we mount it on the shaft so this means that since since bearing is a standard component so the shaft diameter could be adjusted or could be laced so it will fit to the standard uh, ball size of the bearing this is the width of the bearing the width uh, depends on the ball bearing series. Normally, bearing suppliers like SKF uh, or Timken, they provide series of bearings which are extra light series, light series and medium series. Uh, the larger the series, the wider the width of the bearings. Also, I could say the larger the series, the more load capacity can be carried by the bearings. The rolling elements of uh, ball bearings is uh, spherical ball bearings while for the roller bearings they have uh, different kind of rolling elements uh, as shown in this image uh, which are spherical symmetrical, spherical asymmetrical, uh, cylindrical roller, needle and also a taper roller. As you can see in this image uh, for ball bearings uh, they have two types of ball bearing which is uh, on the left is a radial type and uh, on the right is an angular type for both for ball bearings uh, is a radial type or angular type they can carry uh, radial load and also thrust load or axial load uh, angular type is uh, much uh, better in uh, sustaining the thrust load if you look on the the alignment of the ball bearings they have kind of a, at an angle uh, which we call the alpha angle is normally 25 degrees this one uh, this is for angular type ball bearing on the left is a radial type ball bearing but both uh, uh, ball bearing uh, either radial type or angular type they can support thrust load and also radial load okay on the right is a roller bearing uh, as shown uh, the image on the right is a straight roller type uh, for straight roller type of roller bearing they can only support radial load they cannot support the thrust load but the benefit of a, a roller bearing the straight roller type they can carry greater radial load compared with uh, ball bearing 
both uh, radial type of angular type of ball bearing the roller bearing has a greater capacity of sustaining radial load okay basically for bearing problem we have two equation basic equation as shown here uh, we could calculate the life of the bearing or we could calculate the uh, required capacity of the bearing CREQ is a required capacity of the bearing so uh, normally uh, mostly uh, for bearing problem uh, they ask you to find the CREQ for CREQ is a required capacity value of the bearing so once we have calculated the required uh, capacity the capacity is mean required load of the bearing we have done we can refer to the table provided from the bearing suppliers then we could check uh, the nearest uh, value of the maximum from there we could select our bearing so the first equation there is a life equation the life equation is a uh, where when you already know your uh, rated value your rated capacity where is c where l is a uh, lr times to the break in the bracket c over fr to the power of 3.33 so if you want to calculate life so uh, you must know the value of C. C is a uh, rated capacity of the bearing uh, from the table uh, provided uh, from the bearing uh, suppliers. So if you can calculate life, so you use the first equation. So, but normally in bearings, we always use uh, find the required load first, required capacity CREQ. Where if you look on the second equation, CREQ equal to FR times L over LR to the power of 0.3. FR is a radial load applied to the bearing. So FR is you after you have you already calculate the reaction force on the bearing. So that will be your FR, the radial load. What is LR? LR is a rated life. Rated life is a nine nine times ten to the power of seven cycles. So which means that. Um, the bearing suppliers they carry they already set the standard test so it means that they test a group of similar bearing one specific bearing when 90 percent of the bearing survive the rated life where nine times ten to the power of seven cycles so what is the value of the load applied on the bearings so that is c c is the rated load so lr is the rated life 9 times 10 to the power of 7 cycles l is your bearing life so bearing life you have to calculate normally uh, you must uh, know uh, set uh, you know the rpm of your bearing because your bearing is uh, mounted on the shaft so the rpm of the shaft will be the rpm of your bearing so so the rpm uh, in terms of revolution per minute so from there you can uh, uh, estimate uh, how many hours per day uh, your machine the bearing will operate the shaft will, will, will rotate for how many hours per day and uh, how you design for how many thousand hour life so from there you can calculate your life by in terms of uh, revolutions okay the exact equation for to calculate the life of the bearing and also to calculate the required capacity can be shown uh, in this image actually we have a uh, two factor here we have a uh, kr reliability factor and also k application factor okay as you can see to calculate life life equal to we have a kr here. we add kr here because the previous slide i showed you just this is just a basic roughly a basic question but to be exact the as a question for bearing here is as shown here for to calculate life and CRQ. So L equal to KR times LR in the bracket C over K or FR to, uh, to the power 3.33 and CRQ equal to KAFR L over KR LR to the power 0 0.3. So normally, as I told you, for the bearing, the bearing problem, firstly, we got to find the CRQ we need to find the rated capacity the required capacity of the bearing so CRQ equal to KA KA is the application factor 
km k times fr uh, in the bracket l over kr and lr uh, to the power 0 0.3 so the point is uh, why is this a reliability factor Reli reliability factor or, or we can call it life adjustment reliability factor you can get uh, refer to your javinal textbook on the refer figure 14.13 from there you can get a factor uh, reliability factor based on uh, in this figure this uh, life adjustment uh, reliability factor your KR so you can get your KR from this graph from this figure so if you look uh, on the x-axis <coughs> it's a reliability from 90% to 100% uh, and the y-axis is the, the KR your reliability factor so you can get from this graph so normally when the, when the design problem when the reliability factor is not given we assume it is a 90% reliability so your KR is 1 if you look on the graph your value of KR is 1 if you are the light if the let's say if your reliability given or if, if you assume in your design problem that your reliability is about uh, uh, 99% so if you look on this graph is your KR is uh, approximately 0 0.2 so you will use this graph to find your uh, KR value okay this uh, table 14.3 is for you to get your application factor KA so as you can see in this table uh, we have a uh, three columns here type of applications and the middle column is a uh, ball bearing and the last column is a uh, roller bearing so it depends on your design problem this uh, depend on the how your mounting of your bearing your the shaft uh, how your your machine operate so if your machine operate is a uniform load a smooth uh, power transmission where there will be no impact so you can consider to use uh, one for your k okay, for bearing one also for roller bearing also one so if your power transmission you involve with gearing but you still have a uniform load no heavy impact it's just for gearing like a gearbox so you can use the ka value, KA value uh, for this ball bearing between 1 to 1.3 so normally uh, you take the either 1 1.1 1 1.2 or until 1.3 the range there but that's for ball bearing for roller bearing it remains the same as one so let's say normally uh, design problem for machine normally we are not going for gearbox or smooth tra transmission and then maybe we have running a we have some a little bit light to moderate impact for light and moderate impact you can use the factor that uh, uh, for light is 1.2 to 1.5 and for moderate impact 1.5 to 2 for, uh, that's for ball bearing so if you look the value for the rolling is a little bit different okay let's say normally machine sometimes they ask you uh, the machine will operate between light to moderate if uh, if uh, the, the if like the, the question is stated like that the machine run from light to moderate so in that case you can for this ball bearing you can use in the middle of the range because the minimum is 1.2 the maximum is 2 from there you can use uh, uh, in that case you can use 1.5 in the middle like to moderate it means in the middle from the range if you look from the heavy impact so the larger the factor value is 2 to 3 for ball bearing and we have different value for roller bearings so this one is for KA okay lastly what I can, I can say in this video for this part 1 video of your uh, bearings uh, you must use these two equation uh, life and also required uh, CRQ required capacity of the bearing so as I told uh, the first thing uh, in uh, bearing normally we need to find the CRQ first uh, then after we get our CRQ so we will use table and from there we can select the bearing size that we want so I will show this in the next coming video, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.